Dale Brady has been working on a walking tour, and along the way, she has discovered rabbit holes that keep taking her down all kinds of history stories, and she's fascinated, and she shares these things with us. We're like, why don't you share them with everybody, all right? So I got her to commit to a Romney on the Menu, and I'm really pleased that she is willing to do this, especially because she was out in Montana last week and it was snowing at least a foot, right? So we're glad that she made it back. I'll turn it over. All right. So, yeah, so basically what Carol says, um, I only moved here in 08, although my mother moved here in 02. And I noticed things like empty buildings on Main Street and all these interesting old houses and stuff and tracked down that there was a walking tour and then thought, well, there seems to be more than what's on was the current version at the Taggart Hall, if you've seen that. Um, and just because I like history, I got involved and I'd find this story and that story and look things up. But very recently I found out a really good way, are we still a really good way to find things like through the assessor's office, the cards and the deed books and also I'm, I'm going in deeper than I was before. Um, also one of the things that interests, interests me is what makes a community and you hear the stories, you all have been involved in some of the stories and you hear the stories or see the pictures of Main Street and all this stuff used to go on and I got curious as to where did it go. So I'm tracking down when different businesses closed and things like that. Like, there's no restaurants, <laughs> which is, of course, a particular interest of mine. Um, so I'm, look, I'm, I'm trying to collect those stories and also along the way I'm on the arts, the board of the Arts Council. So we're looking, you know, how do we get people why don't people come to town anymore? They used to come to town. Well, videotapes and all that came along and everyone had a TV, so I think that changed things a lot. We won't talk about fast food. Um, so some of the sources I've been using is the West Virginia Property Viewer, which is a website, and you can click on any address and see who owns the house and what they paid for it and all that. If you go to the assessor's website, they've scanned in all the cards, so you can see some history of the past. Uh, whenever someone started a card for that property for whatever reason, uh, that, that's available, but it's not very uniform. There's also a website, um, SHPO, S-H-P-O, which you can go to and see a history of different buildings. Um, and I'm going to sound confused because it's all a mishmash in my head sometimes, but you can click on these different links and they'll show you where the Romney Historic Commercial District survey was done on different buildings. And I have some things I can show you, whether or not I can project them, you can see them later. Um, and of course, some of the buildings are on the National Register of Historic Buildings. So there's a lot of different places. Wikipedia has an amazing amount of articles about Romney and different people and sites and things. And I. I used to be able to log in, I recreated that, and I still can't find out who's entering that stuff. <laughs> so um, it seems to be accurate and not biased in any way. So, so far I don't have any, I don't think anyone had any problems with it. And then of course I'm in the deed books trying to track back. Uh, it's jumping ahead slightly. Um, so some of the goals that have come along is how can Romney b become an official historic district and what does that mean and, and there's more buildings that could be surveyed than were when they did the commercial district and back in 1980s Nan Stevens was doing those uh, his surveys also. So we have a couple different versions along the way and they can be really helpful in learning about the architecture and why a historic building might be considered of value, you know, just the little brick cornices or something that we don't necessarily even see affect it. And there's also comments like some of the buildings are old enough, but someone has changed the storefront windows or something. So if if people really wanted to be serious, somebody, you know, would maybe try to change the windows back to what was more uh, authentic when the building was built. We would, of course, like to have a walking tour that people really would come to town and and enjoy the tourists and all and there's a there's a website called the Clio 
theclio.org, and there are some um, many sites for Hampshire County and Romney already being entered on that. Anyone can enter them uh, with pictures and all. So if people Google something, this starts to come up. So the more we can get out there to come up and the more information. And technology may be moving faster than us because we were talking about putting those little cues, those little black square, on, on the front of different buildings or in the, you know, you could point something at them and it's like, well, it seems like we're going way past that and everybody's got GPS now and everything. So we're going to try to keep up with technology to see if people are walking around uh, town, they can point at different buildings or whatever. But the Clio also offers an online walking tour where you don't have to have paper. So there's a lot of options out there for getting uh, more interest in this area. Um, I had some questions, and if you if you think that you already told me the answer, don't jump in and say it. But <laughs> but if you know the answer, I would we would like to hear them. One is what restaurant did the ladies put <coughs> dinner rolls in their purses after Sunday lunch because the rolls were so good? Uh, that's not the no. That's not the new century. Greenpalm. They may have, but this isn't the one I heard the story about. So. The Greenpalm. No. It was the Carlton. Apparently they had a really good dinner roll baker. And this is one that I haven't been able to find an answer to. Um, I ran across a reference to a building, I think it shows up on Shippo, called The Chimneys. It says the address is 1 East Main Street, which is not possible. Um, I believe from my notes, which again are jumbled up and will make more sense eventually, I believe the source where I read it, they said a Sue Arnold was living there. And then there was a reference to um, one of the Whites, and I started wondering if it was Robert White's house that at some point was called the Chimneys. It does have chimneys. So I'm, I haven't confirmed that yet, but that's that's one of the little fun things I have run across to track down. Okay, where and what was the beehive? A um, military store. Downtown Charles. Hi, Seven Eleven. Well, it's, it's that down that block on the corner, the house that John Childs has on the corner. If you, this part that faces away from Route 50 looks like a shop front. Mm -hmm. That was, and uh, Miss McCarty was was uh, was running it at one point. And here's something I haven't been able to find yet: is where was George Marshall's house? The Marshall family, the Redskin guy. Back here. Well, he never lived here. But it was. But, but his he's, family lived but he's Rose, buried. He's buried here. Rose, yeah, Rose Pancake lived in the White House back here on this block. Is it on that side of Antigua? It's on this so side. It is, so it yeah, is within it's the, the big, It's the white wooden house. And that's Rose Pancake? Rose Pancake okay. lived there after the Marshalls. Okay. Well, Rose lived there, but before that, the Marshalls lived there. But that was George's family, but he never lived here. But he loved coming to Romney to yeah. visit. Well, I found references to the Rose Pancake house, but I haven't found that. I think Carol's is where she has her office was the SC Pancake. That was Effie. Yeah. So Rose was, yeah. yeah. So, and then another question is, why is Main Street angled like it is, instead of just straight? Because of the Grub Lane, it used to run, it used not to be Main Street. Grub Lane was, yeah. well, well, Gravel Lane was Main Street. But there's another story beyond that. And again, I'm going to mess this up. I think it was Robert White. His house has a garden. And I think one of the Angus McDonald's before the Civil War wanted to make this straight, but it would have gone through his garden, so they had to move it over a block. Up, up here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Down, down there. Yeah. Build the house right in the center. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so little fun things. Um, I'm going to work through the PowerPoint just because it helps me. You probably won't be able to see it real well. Well, let me just give you a little idea. It really is better to do it. This, uh, for example, is the um, 
this is what, there's two versions. This is what you can see if you're looking at the assessor. So like if you click on that red dot. You can go to more information and it shows us uh, the like, viewing building record. So you can do this for any building in West Virginia, well, particularly Hampshire County for this, the West Virginia property viewer. So this shows that this building was built in 1984. It's on gravel. Yeah, it's on, oh, it's part of the fire company building. This is what you really want to look for, usually, if you're trying to track some history. This shows that the Romney Fire Department bought this in 2010 from Evelyn Seville, which she acquired it in 2002 by, and there's a will book from Victor Seville, who may have been her husband or her father. He got it in 1944, which is after this date. And Nola Cheshire owned it at some point, 1946 or something. So that's what, that's basically that shows you. So I'm wading through all those and going through the deed books and everything that are associated with that. This is what, just real quickly, if you go to Clio, um, it'll, it'll have a map you can, with little red, those little red uh, markers. And you can see like all these buildings, somebody's already entered these into the system and, and many, many more. And there's a little thing there about them also. And this is the SHPO map. And you can zoom in and you can do searches. Here's Romney. You can zoom in and it will show you all these dots that are historic. Places. I think I'm a little out of. Well, I spent too much time on that. So I had a little fun putting PowerPoint together. And Gail, if you click on those SHPO dots, does it pop up with more information? On yes, the yes, site? and that's where you can go through to find the uh, the surveys that have been done, and sometimes two or three different surveys are linked there. Photographs. Like on the Kern House, there's a really good description of the architecture, how it was analyzed, uh, the woodwork, the brickwork, and everything, and um, mm -hmm. with some pictures and all. Mm -hmm. Okay. So these are indeed a little bit small, but these are just some pictures. And a lot of these came from the historichampshire.org and some of them from some other places. Just different views. Mm -hmm. here different views of Romney and one thing I noticed particularly was there was a lot of trees and in downtown Romney there was a lot of trees and until even in 08 and 09 we still had some trees not the big old ones but we did have trees I know the mayor is trying to do it let's get more tree things but I think it really does set the tone if you can see these pictures how different it, different it looks and um, this is uh, we'll see pictures this is the um, that's the Kel the, that's probably the new Century Hotel in that version. No, well, it could be the Keller. Keller. Keller, Keller before Keller. the new Century. Yeah. And that's the building that is pretty much still across the corner, I think, from it. Dirt streets. And dirt streets, yeah. We don't really want those anymore. That's the Cookman building. Right yeah. There's your Carlton that's looking down the other way, the Carlton restaurant and the Haynes office, and then of course you can't see the literary. So, but there used to be some nice big trees. Now this picture, one of the stories I first heard when I moved here was that the Alpine Theater had been torn down. Well, lo and behold, I find a building that says Alpine Theater on it, and it's not a building that's been torn down. It turns out the corner building, the coffee shop, different things it's been in front of the brass rail is that's where the alpine movie theater was and apparently there is still some structure inside with different levels like you would have in a movie theater what got torn down next to it was this building which was um 
I don't remember exactly who had it most recently, but it was originally the Hauser, Hauser family, and then some other people, the grocery store and stuff, some other people had it, and it has a really nice sort of balcony, sorry, a really nice sort of balcony on top of it. So that was very decorative. And I don't know that I'm related to these Bradys, but when I found out that the Wordman building indeed was not on the corner and the Brady house was, I got interested to pursue that. And I found out that Samuel Brady is the one that came here with his family. His son Isaac in 1869 got the, the corner lot 75 and 76, those two corner lots, um, when the, the article, the place where I saw it was an indeed, and it says Bank of the Valley liquidated. It may, be, it may be 1866, but definitely by 1869, Isaac was able to uh, get those two lots. And there's a picture, it says, when it was the Mountaineer Handicraft Shop. And here's one that's older, and the people who did the survey of that building felt that there was probably a smaller log, log structure inside, and you can see from this that that uh, probably is true. That's that's much smaller building there. And there's the livery stable. You know where that was located? It was behind it. Was it? Yeah, where the Frontier Communications, the communication building is, yeah. Um, Did you know that? And I have found reference to about six, five or six different stables that were associated with the town, like Parker. House had a stable, Keller House had a stable, and there's a couple others, so this wasn't the only one, they were sort of everywhere. <coughs> and that's a picture of the Wordman building, which this must be a little building that existed, kind of looks like it was in between the two of them for a little while, Good Goodyear tires. And you can see in the edge here, that goes pretty close up to where the... 41 Main Street is. Uh, I think there was actually a gas station on the corner there. At one time you'll see uh, a white flash gas sign and stuff <coughs> in some of the postcards. Yeah. Now here's a gas station that's in front of the building that still exists, right. the Rexall. Um, but I, I did see a picture or a reference that Brady's shop at one point might have had uh, fuel tank, uh, gas tanks. This, of course, is the theater. I think this was both the Opera House and then the Silent Theater and the Ideal Theater. I think that building existed through all of that. And it even is a picture, I think, of the Ben Franklin. That, that, that became that's a big Pioneer store. There's a Pioneer in between. There's a Pioneer in between. Well, there was a restaurant there. Yeah, Pioneer restaurant. That is a Pioneer Theater. Not Pioneer. At one point it was called the Ideal, or is that a different theater? Well, in 1930s, 20s and 30s, it was the Pioneer Theater. Pioneer. That's before that, I guess that. And, and I think the Pioneer in the, in the 40s moved up to the pal to the, the other side of Main Street up in the corner. Okay. So there was a Pioneer restaurant at some point, too, I think. I think it was on the second. I, well, I mean, that's an Alpine Theater. Yeah. Was that on the second floor of the theater, on the second floor? It looks like it was high enough to it do that. It does. That's enough yeah. big windows. Was yeah. the theater on the second floor? No, it's on the first floor. Oh, okay. So what was upstairs, Norwood? Was that a bowling alley? Well, probably in the, the theaters I worked in, in the front upstairs? you might have offices, but... It's all open in there. It's yeah. a big, big theater. It's all open. You uh -huh. know, theaters always have the big high ceilings. Oh, I didn't quite But it might have it offices in the front. They would have had balconies on the balcony. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, originally it was the opera house wouldn't have had projectors, but eventually no. then. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and then yes, there was usually a balcony for the segregation too. But I think the I think it became Ben Franklin or something still in that it was building. Owned, uh, Joe. The Blues, yeah. John Blue, and then his son John. Yeah, so that's part of each of these buildings I'm going to be tracking back through the deeds. One of the long-term goals that I was inspired to do is I'm trying to track back each of the lots and parcels and buildings back to the beginning of time, <laughs> 1700s, to see what was there, you know, what shops were there, what buildings got torn down. I, I found a, lo a lot of... 
uh, references to houses that were built in 1900. There was several houses built in that year. It's like, well, there must have been something there before. Was it just a smaller house? You know, that kind of thing. Norwood, uh, what was the cost to go to the movies? Do you remember? What's that? What was cost. the cost? How much did it cost to see a movie? Ten cents on Saturday. Ten cents. Yeah. Could you buy popcorn or anything? Tom Dixon, yeah. Did, did they have popcorn? Oh, I don't know about he was that. He asked the popcorn. I can't remember about the popcorn. <laughs> if it was, I couldn't afford it. But. I remember my, my dad in Southern Maryland talking about it was 50 cents to go to the movies, I think, for two people. And so he went and got a job hoeing corn, and when he made his 50 cents, he quit. <laughs> Instead of thinking about the future. But he did learn a lesson from that. So here, here's the Romney Hotel, which became the Colonial Hotel. And this is, I'm going to have fun tracking down, because I think it's right on the corner. And that back here, this is the road beside there. And I don't know if any of those buildings still exist. I uh, haven't stood there to look yet. But it, it, it was in the middle of the block. More in the middle of the block? Okay. She sees that in one of the parade photographs. Okay. The old Western Island building stood. Okay, yeah. Stood more to the side of it. Okay. Yeah. And I did, because I did see there was a Western Auto and then that, which had some shops in the back and all that. Somebody, were you? Undertaker. You know, yeah. And then it got torn down and turned into advanced auto. And of course, this was actually where the Davises lived. The Davis house was most likely built by Matthew Montgomery, uh, in some, in, who had that property first in the first deeds. But and Angus MacDonald married in and got to Davis family, and there was some other people married, and then Davises ended up with the other log cabin. But I'm going to try, you know, work back my way and see. What was there before? Dale, can you clarify that? I just got confused. I thought when you started talking about the Davis house, you were talking about the log cabin that we. Yeah, I'm sorry. This this is the other lot that's parallel to it, and Matthew Montgomery had the Davis house plot and the plot where Advanced Auto is, and then this got there, but the, but the William Davis hit. Um, McDonald married. The third McDonald married, name less, I know the second wife's name. Anyway, he sold the David, what is now the Davis house, he sold that to William Davis, who was living here. And at some point, William Davis gave this up, and the Davis family was living in that where that is now. It's, it's interesting when you start looking at who married who. And I, I will have more clear notes eventually. We, we can publish them even, but it's still such a mishmash in my head of everything I'm putting in. So this is the Parker House, which is was where the parking lot is for a right aid. It was right up, right up against the corner there. Yes. That's a great photo. Yeah. Yeah, that's a very good picture. And they had a stable behind and things like that. And I think. And this is a little bit later, maybe. I think at the other end of the block where the right egg was is where Mary Pugh, uh, they had a gas station and mm -hmm. something there. And yeah, her dad, or not her brother. Yeah. Was so I'll be, I'll be tracking that down. Was this the building that they moved back on the lot, or was there a different building that they moved back on the lot? The Pugh house was west of that, and then the gas station. And, and the new house was sent back from the block. Well, I think the Keller house, a Dr. Daly had a house that they moved back for the Keller house. I might be wrong. I thought it was on that and right was, block. Yeah, I think I've run across a couple places that they moved houses. I don't know. This, this is a brick building. So this would have probably been like your, yeah. This is a brick building? Parker house is a brick Building, yeah. It would have been hard to move. Yeah. yeah. Well, it would have been like moving your house, you know. So not going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> but a lot, a lot of the houses were more frame houses that could be. I thought that was wood frame. No, I think it's brick. I, I thought it was wood frame. I, I can remember it as a kid. Well, I, it didn't make it to the, to the 1960s. I think. I don't remember. I do, because my aunt lived right up the street in that hotel, <laughs> <was> right <clears> on <throat> the sidewalk. Is it possible that it was brick, but then they added on a white frame and another section to it? Could be. I don't know. I, 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 I 
I was trying to remember what David Parker's talk was. I'll have to go back. I haven't, yeah, I've been watching those, but I haven't seen his yet. So some of these, I know you've seen these pictures. I'm just working through them because I get more stories every time. This was um, Keller House, which looks very much like the Parker House, but you can see it's not really on the corner. It looks like there was uh, still a yard there on the side. So was the Keller House, was that a gyration? Because the Keller House became the Century Hotel, and then this was the New Century. Yeah, yeah the Ke Keller Century. So the Keller Century might have been the one that you just showed us, because that looked a little bit nicer than... Yeah, I don't think there was a... No? I think it was just an ownership thing, and not a... Not a change in There's some mention in one of the... Somewhere I read that they did an upgrade to the interior, but I don't think they upgraded the exterior at all. And I have seen some of the ownership, but not very far back yet. So 1880s, sure. I think yeah. they did an upgrade inside. Louisa Hardy, her talk will tell you an awful lot about yeah. that. Yeah. And in the, in the tablets up at school, when I was scanning those in the 1880s, they said, they had an ad on the back page of the tablet that said, new, new interior rooms and upgrade now available at the Keller Hotel. So, it was about that 1880s. It was renamed because it had been there for 100 years. Yes. That's why it was then named the I think they're one of the people that got one of the very early um, permits to have an ordinary, which was what a bar was called in the beginning. So it, it that does go back quite a ways. And something was moved there besides okay. the Dr. Daly house. And that's just another picture of the Carlton. Do you recognize that? That's the Davis house. That's the Davis house. Yeah, when it got weatherboarded or something. Yeah. 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 But wasn't there a beauty shop in between? Uh -huh. Yeah. Where the library is. Like between the Romney Hotel and yeah yeah. yeah. So this that's, is that's where the, racing. Oh yeah, that's, racing. That's where the West store. Right? Yeah yeah. Where the, see this it's really confusing because it looks like a really big building, but it had to still be there when the Romney Hotel was there. But, I mean next to it. Yeah, I would say what? so. How does that sound? This is the racing. Racy, Bell Racy's building you were telling me about the other day, like after this picture that they had added covers on the sidewalks. Where, where Advanced Auto is. Yeah, well, yeah, it was before the 20s. Yeah. It looked like, it looked, it looked like that in the 20s. So this was on the corner and the, the hotel, hotel would have been next to it. Yes. More between the this and the library. More like where the library is. Well, yeah. The library obviously wasn't there. Well, yeah. You know, right. so there was this, and then the uh, <coughs> hotel, and then in a small area there was a beauty shop or something. Yeah. And Do you have any of the parade pictures? I didn't see those when I was going through. I have seen some over time, but I didn't. That has, yeah, has a really nice view there. Oh, yeah. That has a view. Now, what, what else are you doing with these? So far, I'm just using them to study history. You know, like if I see that building, then I go to that the lot and. What's the ultimate? Hope. Several things. Uh, one is to have a, a word, have a count of the buildings that we lost, um, a history of what happened on that plot of land over time. Uh, with Cleo, I think you can even enter this. This building used to be here, and people can see the picture. You know, when they're walking, doing the walking tour, this used to be here. This used to be here. Things like that. So there's a lot of different things. And if you've ever seen in various stores, even in Montana, Arcadia Publishing publishes books of all you know for small towns and their histories and photos and all. So there's a lot of different things that can happen with it. Um, like the historic Hampshire, 
Historic Hampshire Historic Romney, one of those that was put, the one that was done in 1937 by the Civilian Corps, um, that probably could be reprinted with updates and things. So that I think it's pretty much out of print, and the library's copies are pretty shabby. So it could be a project for something. So far, it's just fun trying to see what was in all these places. And mostly what I'm doing is creating an Excel spreadsheet where I'm collecting all this information. And so at different points when people want to know, like I used it to sort and figure out which were all the buildings 100 years and, and older. And those would be the ones that we would want to be doing surveys of first if they haven't been done as far as making it into historic districts. So I, I'm playing with information and different people may have different uses and different questions um, over time. So I, I don't have, I'm not like sitting here going to write a book kind of solid goal. Are we, are we going to get a walking tour? Yes, definitely. That hopefully would be, and I'm, I live in Romney now, and it, now that the weather's cooled down, I'm going to try to start walking around more and see what, and, and I've taken some pictures of some of the buildings um, also to see what would be nice to look at. Um, so definitely a walking tour would be a, probably a simpler, the simplest of the things to do with this. I gotta tell you that I'm so pleased that you're delving as much as you are and I'm hoping that the Romney Historic Landmarks Commission can collaborate and get information from all yeah. that you are doing so that we can beef up our Data. Yeah, so, uh, like the buildings that already had surveys, they of course would have to be resurveyed, but there's the architectural information is still there about the windows and things and, and whether it's whether it works for the historic district or not. Um, and some of the more more modern buildings than you would think would are considered contributing to the historic district because they match the feeling of the town. Where you, you know, where you might say, okay, that building doesn't look like much or it's not historic, but it, these do contribute to these uh, historic uh, surveys. So that was, this was a picture of that when it was a mer Romney Mercantile, which was pretty soon after the Civil War, I think. And this is the Green Palm Restaurant. Same building. And that's the same, same building, and that... Yeah. That's the ideal theater. The theater building we were looking at is that one. You know anybody who knows their old cars really well to date them? I, I don't, but I suspect if we could find someone, because yeah, that would help. Really help. Yeah. And you can't see this really well, but this is an example of the sort of survey that was done. This is on the uh, First National Bank building right on the down town corner where Lab Thompson had his office and there's a really good description here of all the reasons why it's uh, of architectural merit and uh, this is one for Sherman the, his law house down there law office uh, now and the, the Davis house has had a couple things and done for preservation and grants and and there's pages and pages of stuff people have written about Angus MacDonald and all the things he did, and so why it's not just the building, but history itself um, of value. This is just one page of it, but there's, there's pages and pages. This is the, what is now Mountain Heritage Realty, and their description there says they think there's an older building inside of that one. That makes sense. <laughs> like it could be a log building, but it's been covered over with things. And of course, along the way, I discovered this was where the uh, Walter Crabtree shooting happened with of, um, Inskip, Inskip, who was the sheriff. Inskip, yeah, Henry Carter Inskip, is that how you say it? Inskip. 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 And uh, I don't find a grave. You could have this information on it. And also another thing, um, and so it's, it talks about how Walter had a, um, a grudge against the authorities. And I ran across something somewhere else where he had had run-ins before, apparently had an alcohol problem and was always getting in trouble. And here's a copy of the actual article from when he was uh, executed. Now, where, where is he buried? His family got him. <laughs> 
his, his mother was allowed to get him and bring him back to Romney, West Virginia, but I don't think it really says... I thought you said you found him on Bridge. This is uh, Henry Carter in... in, 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 in yeah. Um, I don't know that Walter Crabtree is buried at... Uh, Inskep is buried at Indian Mound. Yeah. This is part of the joy of the internet. It used to be you had to go all over the countryside and try to find stuff, and now it's just all there. This was also the, the old Moore House. Does anybody remember it being called that? The Moore that House? Mountain Realty? Mountain Realty, yeah, that was uh, Lois's. At one point, it's uh, run across... But because I haven't worked back through the deeds yet to see when a Moore owned it, but it does have references to that name and places. So here's your first Angus MacDonald. Came over from Scotland because of the 1745 Jacobite uprising. He died. Where did that come from? Wikipedia. Yeah, where he why he died. I think they all died as a result of war. I'm pretty sure he died as a result of the war, but he fought in uh, the French and Indian War and, and the Revolutionary War. Now, do, do you have any criteria for whether you keep or post any of these things? Posting, not yet. I haven't figured out, like, I'm collecting things, like, at some point it would be good to put stuff out on like the Clio.org, the, the webs, the things, the buildings that aren't out there yet. So I really am just collecting massive amounts of information and trying to be semi-organized. <laughs> well, I, I would just give you a hint that I started 20 some years ago doing that and after a number of years discovered that I hadn't really documented things and I began to understand that much of the history of this area is anecdotal history. Yeah. And you can't really trust it. So I, I suggest that any time you take something like this, you document where it came from. So at some point, you can go oh, back yeah. and check. Like right, like right now on Walter Crabtree, I have a footnote of this came from Historic Hampshire. So like I put down the Find a Grave website, the trove.nia.gov. That's one article. Uh, if I find it on Wikipedia, and I, I found with Wikipedia, I, after I put the footnote, I also put down when I collected it, because I've gone in a couple years later and someone's massively edited something. So, um, and, but it's good because I've copied the document into, the original document into my Word docs. So I still have that. So he was the first one. And the McDonald family ha does have connections with Romney, but they were mostly living around Winchester. I don't have a picture of the second one. He died in the War of 1812 and left children behind. This is the third one, uh, and he died in the Civil War. But along the way, I discovered, because he had two wives, and the second wife is Cornelia Peake, And she had connections to this area, but he met her out in uh, Missouri. His brother was married to her sister. So he had some, nine some children from his first wife, who died, and then he sold the house, the, what is now the Davis house, to William Davis. And then he went off a few years later and married another wife and had nine some children. Which runs in my family, too. I have a great-grandfather with... 22 children from two wives. But what I discovered was Cornelia Peake MacDonald wrote a book. Well, this is a Civil War diary and memories that, um, that she wrote and was very important at the time. Also, her diaries uh, and things that she wrote for writing what the experience of the people was. So I, one reason I got this is I like adapting things like that for a staged readings. And I was thinking if I had that and maybe some voices from the north and some men's voices and kind of how everyone was feeling. It's, she really talks about everybody coming back and forth through Winchester and eating, you know, damaging the plums and taking all the chickens and people that she knew dying in battles right there. So, And this is her. 
who looks so much like someone I know, but I can't remember who it is. But she, she's just a regular sort of person, but she, she went through a lot. And uh, I haven't got to the part, but I ran across a reference that when she went to Richmond, which is where her husband died, um, she was shown into the room where his body was and not told he was dead. So she lived a long time after that, but she did a lot of writing, which was very important at the time. And I discovered this is the 200th anniversary of the Literary Society, and somehow we missed that. This year? Wow. 1819 is when it oh. was founded. Well. So we have to scramble and have some kind of a party. <laughs> Uh, some people were talking about, and I've run across references where you can actually find the questions they debated. I don't think the debates are registered, but you can find the questions um, that they were debating. I thought that that could be fun to do. And then I just took some pictures of some other house, some houses that are pretty old around here. Um, that's the Dictiola. Dictiolas live in this one now. Diciola. yeah, and that's from 1800. This was kind of across the street, and I didn't get a very good picture of it, but that's 1828, a nice stucco sort of house. This I was interested to find. This was a schoolhouse, and then some other things, but it still looks like a schoolhouse. A family that lives there, I don't know exactly if they would have had those windows at the top. So. Is that where Ernie Fiera used to live? Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, I've run across that name some places. Yeah, there was some postcards. There was actually a postcard where you could see them. Yeah. 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 No, uh, uh, it's on Birch Lane, right across from the Alex. Used to be uh, my aunt was born in that house. Yeah, right now it's owned by a property company. I just so whoever is living in it isn't isn't Oates, down. But Oates has lived in there very briefly. But an interesting thing on it is this, which I don't know if you can see, but it has has some stars here, and it says "Welcome," and it looks like you don't normally just put that on your house. So I will be asking everybody if they know why, what that is and why that house has it. <laughs> is it just an ornament or is it in the stucco? It seems, it seems, I didn't walk up on the porch, I just kind of zoomed in. It's, it seems to be kind of stuck, but it's definitely raised, it's 3D, you know, like the star pattern is, is raised. Whether, so like whether that's attached to the stucco and the, the welcome, it might all have been just attached to so it. Has it been written at the bottom? It, it says welcome. At the top or bottom? Here, bottom. at the bottom. bottom. And then it has, top? it's got stars. One, two, three, four. Four stars. At least four stars, it's kind of hard to see. Maybe five. Could have some more. What's, what street is that on? Yeah, I think it's on Birch. Yeah. It's, um, there's a parking, an empty lot here next to it. It's the only house that faces Birch Lane on that block. Yeah, it's on, if you're going from high that way, it's, it's on the left. Oh, I think I've been in there. And this is the 1898 house. I think it's apartments right now. And I found the colored school. It's on the wrong side of Sioux. It's on the electric. Oh, Romney Electric. No, this is, yeah, this is yeah. the, board of, the Board of Education yeah, building in front of it. I think this is the lot that Beverly was talking about that the PVTA wants to put their buses right, next on. to it. Yeah. <coughs> so they purchased the no, lot. No, data <laughs> no. I, no, I don't know yet. Oh, okay. Um, I'm going to try to find more information on it. it and we, somebody thought it had been moved back, but now we tend to think that the building in front of it was just built where the play yard was. I think it was moved. You think it was moved? I don't have heard that. I think that's, all. that's the way it was in 1920. Oh, okay. <laughs> now, and they were still going to school then. there. And the, when I said the wrong side of Sioux, if you look at the 25 blocks, it's on 
the outside of that. But uh, so I don't know where the historic district can start or end. But the research I'm doing right now is the 25 blocks, and of course, obviously coming into town from the east side, there's several houses and buildings that will be in the historic district. There's um, so that that was really all I had. And if you want to look at any of them closer up, I had um, some stories that I'm studying are. I'm very good at scrabbling my notes around it. Oh, things, so I watched Nancy Judd's talk on uh, J. Brady Thompson's place, and that was the Gilkison building, which I showed you. Um, but, it, and, but Gilkison's didn't own it anymore, so when I hear stories, I try to look them up and see. So Gilkison, the original Gilkison died in 1890, and his son Edwin got it. His he sold it in 1913 to C.W. and Sally Haynes. And the Haynes sold it in 1923 to B.W. Hill. So in there was when Brady Thompson would have had it. 1957, which I think was the year J. Brady died, and or maybe B.W. Hill did, because then it becomes registered in the name of Virginia DeBerry Hill. In 1990, she sold it to Craig Timoney, who I believe still owns it, but leases it to Sheets. Um, so that's the kind of tracking back. Obviously, I don't know how Gilkerson got it. That's one of those dead ends, the original Gilkerson. Um, another thing I've been investigating just there's no future in it, but I've been reading about the old Presbyterian church and cemetery. It turns out the first cemetery in Romney was where the Bank of Romney building is now. And then the second one was the Presbyterian church, which is lots um, 59 and 60. Sometimes it says 50 and 60, which would place them side by side, and sometimes it says 59 and 60, which would put them this way, north and south. And uh, the Maxwell Swisher book has an article describing it even as recently as 1937 that you could read um, the stones and that there were these gnarled old locust trees there. And in 1940 is when it was bulldozed for factory. And, and you probably know this, but Andrew Woodrow was the one who had deeded the property for the church and cemetery. His remains were likely lost during that excavation in the 1940s, along with many other people. So history can be interesting, what we think is important and not... Uh, now, what, what the sources do you use? Well, I have a gazillion sources. <laughs> I started a lot with historichampshire.org, your website. Did and you read the tidbits of history? I don't think I've read those yet. Because they have things like somebody bought somebody's house, or things, you know, there's little bits that by themselves don't mean anything, but when you start putting together what you have, yeah. you add a good bit of information. Yeah. Um, I have the, um, the printout, the, the typed up document from the 1992 walking tour which has a lot of information and references historic Romney and historic Hampshire books, which the library has, and I've gone through those. Um, of course, Maxwell and Swisher have a lot of information. Wikipedia has a lot, and again, I'm, other than the fact that Wikipedia, for instance, I don't know who's writing it, but it doesn't look biased or anything. It looks like it's pretty straight, but. Again, how much of it's anecdotal, it's hard to say. Um, Shippo, Assessor's website, D, uh, the deed books, uh, the YouTube videos, I'm going through all those of these talks and getting notes, and again, anecdotal, but a lot of anecdotal is important, although not always accurate, but definitely. Even my own family, we talk about an event, there's nine children, and we'll get 15 stories. <laughs> the same event. Um, 
So and, and any books I can find or anything, I'm documenting where I get information from. This printouts here are, for instance, this is where I'm making all my notes, searching the deeds back through uh, the assessor's uh, cards where it says who had what deeds, you know, where they, when they got it, what deed book it's registered in. And usually, luckily, when you go to look at a deed, it's, you know, John Smith sold this to Bob Barker, and then the next it'll say Bob, that John Smith got it on, from so-and-so in such-and-such such deed book. So it keep, does keep going back unless you run into a will book where uh, Gilkerson, Gilkerson, I think it was Gilkerson, and some other ones too. It's, he died several years ago and it's known he had the property and these are his heirs and so this is like the first official recording of it somewhere back somewhere, like if you could go forward from the 1790 type land grants and things, then if you could figure out how to follow them that way, then you would meet in some cases. Now, have you used those charts on Historic Hampshire that have the four different eras, the 1763, the 1790, the 1850, and have you found those reliable? Well, I did pretty much find out that the one that's called the 1790 plat that has the, the survey from 1790 and has a list of names. They don't match the land grants, but they do, however, in many cases match 1890, who owned the property in 1890. So, um, so again, what I do when I, in the spreadsheet, I enter all these different things, and then I can start to see patterns, or I can say, where did that come from, and try to track it down. Uh, but it's, it's hours and hours in the deed books, <laughs> or years, or the rest of one's life, or something. Have, have, you, have you started using um, uh, uh, Bill Rice's books, uh, Colonial Papers of the... I have looked through those. There was some particular section I noted. It's not an officially listed source here yet, but I did look through it. Um, Linda showed me around the genealogy room in the library, and I haven't hardly begun to get into that yet. Because um, he, he's very thorough at the beginning of the lots. Yeah. I've made notes to go back to him, and uh, notes from Maxwell Swisher to go back and look at things. Um, I've looked at the land grants and north, northern neck grants and found one of my ancestors down in Hardy County had hundreds some thousand, hundreds some acres um, between Mill Creek and South Branch. So I'm kind of interested to get a map and really see where that was. I also ran across a reference to, um, I really have so many notes I can't hardly assimilate them yet. It's no longer called this, but there was a creek apparently called Short Arse Run, and it was coming out of Short Arse Mountain. <laughs> and, and I think I saw where that was now, but it's definitely not called that anymore. <laughs> well, please keep track of those, because I also I have a set of uh, the U.S. Geological Survey listing, which are both known places and unknown places. And I'm adding on unknown places that I run across like that. Yeah. So that hopefully eventually somebody. I think where I wrote it down is the person's name who that property was, I think is maybe what the name of that is now. So that would help pin down what it was. But yeah, it's good to have all those things. But what I started over here, I've got a square for each one of the 25 lots. And I'm breaking down sort of like who has it now, but I'm also making notes on if something was there that was demolished. And I'm writing down the date of the building. So I'm trying to fill in all the historic buildings to get an idea of, of like houses and everything. If there's a lot, a lot of old buildings in uh, this particular district. And if you look at, I think the district goes goes out of those 25 blocks along Route 50, so I think that will, um, I think it's going to give us quite a collection. If you go to um, West Virginia LEAP, it's the West Virginia Law School, 
they have the LEAP program, and in the appendices it lists many towns who have done this already. And some of them are on Wikipedia, but you can see like they have X number of buildings and what they went through to get declared a historic district. Because even declaring it a historic district, then you have things, responsibilities afterwards to maintain it as that. Uh, it's not just you put a pink star on each building and then walk away. It's a little trickier than that. And uh, of course, I'm interested in buildings that are sitting empty and what we can do with them. I was just going to ask if um, a cen the census records might help you at all, and, and also ask if somebody owns a building but they don't live there, it wouldn't be on the census, would it? No. It'd have to be. It's who dwells there. It's who dwells there. Yeah. Uh, so even property, if they own an outlier property, that we call it. Um, that wouldn't be on the census. Unless they were in sort of residence at the time. The only, only thing you would gain from that was if there's a house number associated with that address and they didn't own property, you could assume, and I say assume only, that they didn't own it. If there was no property value associated with their name. Ah, okay. That's the only thing you could you couldn't make the assumption, and it would only be an assumption, gotcha. that they didn't own it because they had no property value. Okay. Also, I, I just recently updated the uh, Sanborn maps on the website, um, and I now have 94, 99, 15, and 33 in the original full-size map. They're large downloads, but they are there. And, um, I've looked at some of them because it does, the older ones will say like where the new courthouse is. If I was reading the map, I think I mentioned this to you, if I was reading the map right, that there used to be a wheelwright shop there. And, and so if you look at the older maps, it's going to be kind of fun to figure out what was, what used to be in a place. I found that one of them, um, in the upper left hand corner, there's a dotted line and it's the uh, uh, pipe that brings water from spring a private source. Ah. And I think that, as I understand it, the first water in Romney was at the schools for the deaf and blind and was owned by them, so it was not used by the city. Um, and that, I think, is the pipe that's shown on that. Hmm. On but, I mean, it's, to me, it's interesting questions like where did everybody get their water from? Were there wells dug and, you know, pumps and things? Well, all these water originally came from the gap, over the gap. The springs up in the mountain. Okay. It's like all the way to the they come across the bridge and like over the wall. Yeah. From Vanderbilt. Because you don't, you don't usually build a place if you don't have easy access to water. That's for sure. Built a, built a plant. So that's what I'm doing. It's. I know most of the people here probably know more than I do about everything. But I'm trying to sort of get it in one place. This is the way, the way I feel. You know, just collect the stories, collect the sources, <coughs> figure out what's there, put the stories together, and uh, and any sources that you run across or books or things. And the article in the paper, it's like find some more people who have stories and bring them to tell them. Tell them it's real low key. We just talk. <laughs> um, one thing I, I'd like to just throw out is I hope eventually, whether it's the Romney Historic Landmarks Commission or whoever, that we need to be careful about putting this information and relying on something like either Wikipedia or Clio. Um, I, I much prefer to have a privately owned web source because that's the only way that you can control who has access to put stuff on it. Yeah. And when Wikipedia first came out, I remember I'd, I'd get a call from somebody and they'd say, well, do you know, they say something on, on that thing, then I know that's right, can't you do something about that? And I thought, is, I'm not spending my life <laughs> trying to correct all the garbage. Yeah, that's that's yeah. And the only way that you can really protect against that is to have, you know, your own site. Like, like Historic Hampshire, where it's limited you know, access. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. You saw the religious census of 
I think you, we get that yeah, one. There's one of the churches or something. Uh, in 1941, the religious census of Romney. It's not I, Well, I, I think I sent it to you, but it's lost somewhere. <laughs> well, but I don't know any follow up on you. There were somebody. But it, it was. It shows addresses and who lived in each building in Romney in 1941 and how long they lived there. Oh, wow. And, yeah, but it's, a, it was it's in called the, the Religious Census? It's called the 1940, I think it was 41 Religious Census, and it was in a file cabinet drawer down at the Methodist Church. And I went in and there was a big stack of index cards and I typed them all in. A, I think it was a spreadsheet. I put them all in and then sent it to Charlie, I think. If not, I still got it. I'll be glad to yeah. share it with you. But it was in about five women in town did it, one of which was Flo Welker. She was one of the real workhorses that went house to house. And what magazines they subscribed to. Oh, wow. it, was, it was pretty cool. I put it on the Fay Hampshire History Facebook page. Just to, you know, anybody wanted to let me know. I only sent it out to like two people. Send them the spreadsheet anytime. Yeah. Did it rate them by the by the uh, according to the intensity of their faith? No, sir. <laughs> There's no not. rating. No. Ask them who, what they they were Methodist or Presbyterian or I think the one Jewish family in town. And, um, it was rather interesting. I found it fascinating. It took me a whole weekend, literally 16 hours of typing. To, that sounds like a project out. I do. Yeah, I, <laughs> start doing I just find it and do it. I just don't yeah. even worry about it. I, yeah. like it. I found, did find it interesting. One of the churches I ran across, I was reading the story of, they used to have 300 people going to that church. And I'm thinking, I hear now about churches that have trouble getting 12 people. And I wonder, I haven't really looked at the demographics of the population. Has the population shrunk that much, or have we just shifted yeah. what we do? Because it's oh. definitely... Oh. Oh. Yeah. So these tours then, I guess, will all be done with a cell phone? Is, is that the end game here on the cell phone? It's got to be. I like hard copy. I so, do too. So yeah, it will definitely be, there will definitely be a hard copy version. Um, but because I, I know people, I mean, I'm waiting for people to get their cell phones embedded in their arms or something. Right, that's, you know, that's true. <laughs> and um, so in order to, there's a certain percentage of the population that if we want them to do a walking tour, we're going to have to have something on their phone. And that's where Clio comes in, and you don't have to worry too much about the exact information. You can put rep links to go yeah. see the Hampshire, the Historic Hampshire website. But and the, the way Clio works, you can put in existing buildings, I think buildings that don't exist anymore. You can even enter events, you know, sport things. You can even enter the, looking at a field. This is a field where 50 cows ran them up, you know, or something. You know, you can, it can be an event, not just a building. And Google Maps is involved in it. And if, once you put these things, Google Maps will suggest the order of the walking tour. And then you can say, no, we really want them to go there and, you know, adjust it and all. So, There'll be different technologies interacting, but I, I really like hard copies. What yeah. is the average age of these people that take the tour? Like I know when we give tours at our house, and we're going to be giving two this next week, the average age is probably around 70. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And they want hard copy stuff, yeah. I know that. But all the millennials, I mean, you know, all the younger people, they do everything. They don't know what paper is. No, they really don't. They don't, <laughs> they don't need to do the walking tour. Yeah. Yeah. They don't even want to go the walking tour. That's the so thing. They just want to see the pictures of it, you know. Yeah. So, and I know some of the bus tours and things do have older people, and so yeah. your paper tour, your paper map would work well for them. And yeah. So the center of this would be where? Where would people get this? Like a Taggart Hall? Yeah, that because to me that place is out of the way. Yeah, that That's brings up a whole bunch of little questions. We got we got the current tour reprinted, but I discovered that the, when you walk up to Taggart Hall, they have some brochures on the outside, and the walking tour wasn't one of them. I don't know if it is. I haven't checked lately, but I pointed out lightly, like say, yeah. can you put some walking tours outside for people who come here when you're closed? You know, so I don't know. So those are things, but. Um, I ran across references to uh, 
things being in storage and stuff for when Romney gets a museum. Right. And that's, that be? that's still in the works. Yeah. Where would the museum be, though? Do you have idea? Uh, I haven't gotten that far, and I'm not going to bother. How about the American Legion? Like you had mentioned, somebody mentioned to me when we did the Legion, this would be a great place to have the Romney Museum. Because yeah. I've been in Taggart Hall, and it's it's nice, but it's small, it's, and it's and you can't add more stuff, you know, and, and it's and it's off the street. Yeah, yeah. So I, it seems like a bigger museum that was, and then Taggart Hall could be a building that gets toured. I was asking about touring the Kern House, but apparently the, the American Legion has all its offices in it, so it probably wouldn't so work very well for that. But they do, but... The, I haven't yet. The, no. How about the bottling works? I mean, at one time, that was there, you know, for two years yeah. or stuff. But is that out of bounds? Do we know? Like the bottling works, like for touring? You know, I suspect so. It's got a nice parking lot. People can... Yeah. Meet there, congregate there, have a kiosk or something. Yeah. It's good to brainstorm ideas because you never know when something might exactly. work through. You know, the American Legion might need projects to bring in money, and if they, you know, if you had to pay yeah. five dollars to go into the museum, each yeah. person that might be. Yeah. So we, anytime we can brainstorm, come up with ideas, buildings that we're not talking about, places, you know. Like, like, you know, where could a museum be or what buildings could be on tour and stuff like that. I think the more we brainstorm, the more likely we are to make things happen. And the more we get the word out that everybody who's going through their Aunt Granny's attic, Aunt Millie's attic, don't throw away all those old pictures. Yeah. Even if you don't know who they are, they're yeah, still... Yeah, bring them to the local whatever library or mm -hmm. something so that, you know, can tell us who's and they were in, that might be helpful. Yeah. Although, a couple years ago, the um, HAMS, the acting group from the Arts Council, we did a reading, staged reading at the Bottling Works, A Soldier Come Home, if you saw that. And it's all taken from letters, Civil War letters, that a, a person found from his family in the attic. You know, and people throw that stuff out. So, this, this woman, when she wrote her diary, she made eight handwritten copies, and I forget, like, a couple hundred pages each for her family, and there's only a couple left, but they did get found and published, so these things are delicate. Mm -hmm. I had an old lady down, well, an older lady <laughs> down Springfield uh, at the grade school reunion, and I said to her, I said, where is the pictures from where the Milton girl lives now? She said, oh, Susie, I threw them in the trash. So I didn't think anybody was interested, so I just threw them away. Yeah. Mary Catherine Martin, Mary Catherine McGuire, or something. Mm -hmm. It's hard. Mm -hmm. It's hard. I think she Carol doesn't throw anything away. <laughs> <laughs> I can testify to that. Yeah. Well, I really, I really appreciate the opportunity to share this and learn more from you all, and just keep on going. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.